Okay, good. Then uh, welcome and good morning, uh, at least to the ones in the room. <laughs> Uh, and uh, good day wherever you are. Um, so this is the session on information design and we're going to have four talks. And the first one is the limits of an information intermediary in auction design and it's given by uh, Kang Ning. Thanks for the introduction. So, uh, uh, hello everyone. I'm here to present this work. It's a joint work with uh, Reza Arijani. Seed Energy and my advisor, Kamesh Munagala. So uh, we will be working on this classical Bayesian auction setting where we have a seller who is trying to sell one item to n buyers. And each buyer has a private valuation VI drawn from a distribution FI. So uh, in this classical Bayesian auction setting, we assume these uh, distributions are public information and we assume they are independent. And the seller's goal is to maximize her revenue. So she will use the optimal auction uh, on these buyers. And the optimal auction is characterized by the seminal work of Meyerson. Uh, and in our setting, we are an intermediary and we know the private values of the buyers. And we want to use our knowledge to uh, improve the economic solution. So concretely, we will, partially improve, uh, we will partially reveal our information to the seller so that uh, she, while trying to maximize her own revenue, will also design an auction that is more beneficial to the buyers. And we uh, use the Bayesian persuasion framework uh, first proposed by Kamenica and Gensko. So uh, the single buyer setting of, of our work uh, has been done by uh, the great work of uh, of Bergman, Brooks, and Morris. And we first look at an example in the single buyer setting. So uh, in this setting, the buyer's valuation distribution is, uh, uniformly drawn, uh, is, is uniform on one, two, and three. And uh, if there's no signaling, then the revenue optimal price would be two. So uh, it's because uh, if, the buy, uh, if, if the seller sets the price to be two, then the buyer will buy the item with property two thirds. So the expected revenue would be four over three, and two is the optimal price. And we can uh, uh, picture the distribution like this rectangle here. And we can say we pick a random square in this rectangle, and the buyer's value will be the number in that square. And uh, one signal we can tell the seller is to uh, color the rectangle like this, and then tell the seller the color of the valuation. So for example, uh, suppose we draw the valuation in the green area, then we will say, uh, we will tell the seller that the value is drawn from the green area. And in that case, uh, the seller will reason that the probability of the value being one will be six over 12 because there are six uh, green square of one and 12 green squares total. So uh, if I sell, uh, if I set the price to be one, then uh, the buyer will buy this property one. And if I set the price to be two, then the buyer will buy this property a half. And as, uh, if I set the price to be three, then the buyer will buy this property one over three. So um, in this case, the seller is actually always indifferent in setting the price to be anything in the support. And the, in particular, the seller is willing to set the price to be the lowest value in the support. So in that case, the buyer will always buy the item and the trade is efficient. And we also argue that the seller cannot increase her revenue with this information. And that is because uh, the seller is indifferent in setting the price to be anything. So uh, she is indifferent to set the price to be two for every signal. And for doing that, she actually didn't need the signal. So the signal can't help her in increase the revenue. So uh, to summarize this, uh, with this signaling scheme, the trade is efficient, but the seller has the same revenue. And uh, the work of Bergman, Brooks, and Morris show that uh, we can always do this via uh, decomposition into something called equal revenue distributions. And to uh, put this thing in symbols, uh, we can write this. So for any signaling scheme, the consumer surplus 
uh, we can first show is upper bounded by the right hand side. So uh, the expected value is an upper bound for the total surplus of the tree. Uh, it's because uh, the value is the only source of the surplus. And the, buyer's uh, and the seller's revenue is at least her revenue when she receives no signal. And that's because uh, having more information is always beneficial for her. So uh, we can write this inequality that the consumer surplus is at most the max total surplus minus the minimum uh, seller's revenue. And the work by Bergman, Gross, and Morris showed that we can actually, uh, we can actually get the equal sign here uh, using their signaling scheme for the single buyer setting. So uh, our work, uh, in our work, we want to generalize this result to multi-buyer auctions. And uh, concretely, we want to uh, do this thing. So similarly, we can define the benchmark to be the max possible total surplus and in that case, it's just um, to allocate the item to the buyer with the highest valuation. So it's the expected max VI minus the minimum revenue of the seller. And in that case, it's the seller's revenue when she receives no signal. So we can still write this. Uh, the consumer surplus of any signaling scheme is at most this benchmark. And we want to ask if there's some signaling scheme so that uh, the consumer surplus equals this benchmark. And the, our first result is an impossibility. Right? So uh, we show that there's an uh, upper bound of two. So uh, in general, we can't do better than half the benchmark, even for some uh, two buyer situation where each buyer's valuation distribution is just a two point distribution. So for that, uh, we can just prove it by uh, enumerating the possible signaling schemes because there are only two buyers and the distributions are two point. So uh, we naturally ask, can we uh, give an approximation for this? Even if we can't get uh, like one times benchmark, can we get a constant times benchmark? And our main result is that uh, we give a signaling scheme so that the consumer surplus is at least uh, a constant fraction of the benchmark for IID regular value distributions. Uh, the regular here is just Meyerson's uh, regularity, the, the typical regularity condition in auction design. So uh, uh, from now on, I'm going to uh, talk about some technical details about our work. So first, um, we want to simplify this benchmark for the case of IID regular value distributions. So. Uh, from Marison's work, we know that uh, when the value distributions are IID regular, the optimal auction is just a second price auction with a reserve. And suppose uh, we denote Y to be uh, the value distribution condition down below the reserve. Then uh, we can argue that the, the second price auction with a reserve is uh, generally quite efficient. Right? The, the only inefficiency is when everyone's value is below the reserve. So when someone's value is above the reserve, we actually always allocate to the highest value buyer. So um, we can simplify the benchmark to be this. It simply equals the consumer surplus when there's no signaling scheme plus the inefficient, uh, the, the inefficient part, which is uh, the time when all the values are below the reserve times, uh, in that case, the highest value among the values below the reserve. And um, we present this rank T signaling scheme. Uh, and it turns out this rank T signaling scheme is quite uh, good for this setting. So uh, we will reveal the set of buyers whose values are in top T. And then we will also reveal the values of all other buyers. And in that case, the seller, uh, since he, uh, she knows the values of all other buyers, will focus on the top T buyers and the use something similar to Marison's auction for the top T buyers. And then, and then if no one buys, uh, she will instead sell the item to the T plus first highest value buyer. And finally, we will pick a random buyer in the top T and then reveal uh, the color of his value similar to the single, item, a single buyer case. And uh, let's give a concrete example. So suppose uh, the values are realized to be 
four, seven, two, five, one, and there are five buyers. And suppose t equals two, then we will tell the seller that uh, v two and v four are top two buyers, and we will reveal all the other values. So v one equals four, v two equal, uh, v three equals two, and v five equals one. And finally, we will random pick, uh, randomly pick another buyer from two and four, and tell the seller the color of his realization, right? Yeah, because his value is always drawn from a distribution like similar to this rectangle thing. And uh, it turns out that we can show this inequality, that uh, the consumer surplus of this rank T scheme is at least uh, this probability times the expectation of uh, the, top, the average of top T CIs minus C T plus one, where C K is the K's largest draw. Uh, among n draws from y. It's just some formula. And we uh, will rewrite these two formulas here. Uh, so suppose zk is the case largest from n draws from y, then uh, the consumer surplus of our signaling scheme is some factor times this uh, expectation of the average of top t draws minus the t plus first draw. And then the benchmark is about the same factor times the expectation of the largest draw. And uh, so a, a relatively easier uh, argument for a log n approximation is the following. So the consumer surplus of this rank two signaling scheme is about uh, the factor times the expectation of C1 minus C2. And uh, for rank four, it's about C2 minus C4. And for rank eight, it's about C4 minus C8, and so on. So we can add this log n uh, inequalities together, and we will uh, cover the entire benchmark. So we can, so we can see that uh, the maximum of uh, CS rank T is at least a log n approximation to the benchmark. Uh, but uh, like maybe surprisingly, we can actually show a constant approximation. And uh, so actually, the, for the best T, CS rank T is a constant fraction of the benchmark. And for that, we will use the information that uh, y is a regular distribution condition down below its revenue optimal reserve by our assumption that the valuation distributions are regular. And uh, the proof here is uh, relatively complicated, and I'm not going into the details. And uh, finally, uh, let's talk about some extensions and open questions. So in our work, we also show that for general case, so non-identical distributions, and they may not be regular, we can show a, a log n approximation to the benchmark. So uh, there's still a large gap uh, between our upper bounds and lower bounds. So for the IID regular setting, uh, we have an upper bound of a constant, but we don't have a, any lower bound. And for the general setting, we have a lower bound of two, but uh, the upper bound is like big O and log n. So uh, there are still large gaps for this. And for that, uh, we don't really have a good tool to deal with these uh, bounds. So uh, we don't really know how to improve this. And uh, finally, let's conclude by restating our main message, which is we show a way to tell the auction seller something about the buyer's true values so that the buyer's surplus will be approximately maximized. Uh, well, and there are some common assumptions. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, questions, yeah. Uh, yeah, even if the prior distributions are regular, the posterior distributions of your signals might not be. Uh, how do you deal with that issue? Do you always ensure that they are? Yeah, in our signal scheme, they actually are, because uh, we are only cutting the we are only picking like the top part of a regular distribution, and that's still very good. Uh, I also wanted to ask about the signal We are only sending signals to the seller, actually. The seller is the only one who needs a signal, so I, I, guess, I guess it's equivalent to say it's public or private. What do you think uh, is the true answer for this two versus n log n question? You think uh, there's a constant factor 
for, hidden there. Yeah. For the IoT regular case, I think there's a lower bound of like greater than one, but we, we don't have a tool to prove that. And for the general case, I don't really have an intuition for that. Uh, would you expect there to be a gap between the uh, the efficacy of like the deterministic signal schemes versus the randomized? Sorry. Deterministic versus the randomized like signal schemes. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, so by deterministic, you mean when the value is the same, the signal would be the same? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think there may be a gap between deterministic ones and, ra and randomized ones. Uh, because for example, even in a single barrier setting, yeah. Yeah, we need it to be randomized. Yeah. Okay, so then if there's no more further questions, uh, let's thank Angie again. Thanks. And, uh,